Hello everyone, today is day one of the Rating Rush of 2020. So if you did not know, the Rating Rush is a week-long readathon. It takes place every year on BookTube, on Instagram, Twitter, all the book platforms. You can participate even if you are not a book blogger or book reviewer or anything. And it's really fun. It's one of my favorite times of the year. I do it every single year. I love doing it. I'm daily vlogging, as you can probably tell, since this is day one. Uh, actually, technically it's not. Technically it's day two. Um, let me explain. Basically, this happened last year, I realized, where we came back, we dropped my sister off at school in Virginia, and we drove back yesterday, which was Monday, which was day one, and we didn't get home until, like, seven, and I didn't want to start reading because I would only have like, what, five hours? So I didn't think that would be fair. So I am starting today, Tuesday, as my day one, and I'm still gonna have seven days, uh, but I'm just gonna be a day behind. So I'm going to be doing the Instagram challenge today and the reading challenge and stuff. It's gonna be fun. So I know what I wanna read. I really wanna read The Camelot Betrayal by Kirsten White today because I just reread The Guinevere Deception. I finished my reread on Friday. I started it and finished it on Friday, my reread. And I, since it's like fresh in my mind again, I really want to read the sequel since I have it. And I think it'll be really fun because I loved book one and I have been dying to read book two. I've had the arc since like February. And every time I look at it, I'm just like, I, cause I knew I wanted to read it for the reading rush. So, I finally am able to read it, and I'm so freaking excited. So yeah, that's what I'm going to read today. I don't know, I'm not doing anything today, because of isolation, quarantine, love it. Um, I am already dressed, uh, but I have to make my bed and eat breakfast. I need some coffee. I need some caffeine, because I just, I need it. <laughs> I really want to try to leave the house every single day this week. And I thought it would be interesting, uh, since I cannot, first of all, I cannot drive legally. Uh, so last year I was re-watching Books and Lala's vlogs from last year, and what she did was she got her viewers to comment their favorite Starbucks drink, and I want to do something similar. I want to basically go on Starbucks' website, and they have, like, different sections. So they have, like, hot coffee, iced coffee, sweet drinks, uh like not, co I don't know, other drinks, stuff like that, and um, I really want to pick one at random, so whatever I'm feeling, like if I want iced coffee, and then I will do a random number generator, and generate a random number, and whatever order corresponds with that is the drink that I'm going to get. So I want to try to do this every day, I might not be able to, but I really want to try, because I think it would be really fun, uh, but yeah, so um, that's really all I really want to do today. So yeah, I have a video, my TPR video. It's linked in the description if you want to see it. But yeah, I really want to read the Camelot Journal today, and I just think it'll be really, really fun. I'm so in the mood for that. We just started watching Cursed, so I'm like in that Camelot mood. I just reread the Guinevere Deception. We started watching Cursed. I'm going to read the Camelot Betrayal. It's just a Camelot-themed day. So I'm really, really excited. I'm going to do the Bookstagram challenge later uh, in the day. I'm kind of upset that there's no video challenges. Um, there kind of are. There's three of them. But I think I'm going to do either one today or tomorrow, and then one in the middle of the readathon, and then one on day seven. Uh, but I really loved when there was one every single day. I just found it really, really fun because I loved doing it. So, yeah. Kind of upset about that, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go eat breakfast, and I'm gonna go make my bed, and then I will check in with you when I like to talk about the book or something. I don't really know. Hello, so I just ate breakfast. I had cereal and coffee, if you were interested. Probably not, but whatever. Um, and I made my bed, and I think I'm finally going to start reading The Camelot Betrayal by Kirsten White. Um, I remember when I read The Guinevere Deception last year, it took me a lot longer. There are a lot of words on every page, and, like, each sentence is important to the story. Um, that book was, like, 340 pages, and this one is 
a little bit longer. I think it's around 370. But I'm really excited to dive in. I just love the Guinevere Deception. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to talk about it more in my wrap-up. Um, or you can watch my reading vlog from last year. But I'm so excited to dive in. I cannot wait to see how the story continues. I know a little bit about this book. I know a new character pops up, uh, because Kirsten White hinted about it, and I'm so excited to see what she's like. One of my favorite characters. She's also confirmed to have a love interest. I'm so, so excited. Also, um, in the Guinevere Deception, there were some sections before a couple of the chapters from another perspective. It looks like they are in this book as well, but a lot more, uh, parsed out, if that's the word I'm looking for. But there are also other sections from other characters. So, there's one, it says Tristan of Fulton Beringian. I only wanted to show it for a little while because the book doesn't come out until November, and I don't want to spoil it. But yeah, I'm really excited to dive in, so that's what I'm going to read. Also, I really want to redecorate, redecorate, reorganize my bookshelves, just this one, uh, to like put some shelves in other places, uh, so I might do that later. It's just a really free day. It doesn't really feel like the reading rush, and I can't figure out why. Maybe it's because we're in quarantine, and it hasn't really felt like summer, so the reading rush just sort of, like, came, and it was very weird. Uh, so yeah. The summer has really been like flying by. So yeah, I'm really excited to dive in and I'm gonna go start reading and I will update you when I'm gotten a little further and I don't know, it just feels so weird. Like I feel like I'm not in the reading rush. Maybe if I watch some vlogs from last year it'll like get me in the mood for the reading rush. Hopefully it will start to feel more real <laughs> as the week goes on. Um, it is around 11 o'clock. I don't remember what the time was when I just last updated you. But I am now on page 99 of The Camelot Betrayal. I'm on chapter 11. Um, it took me a freaking while to read those first hundred pages or so. Um, which was the same thing that happened with the Guinevere Reception. It's just pretty slow right now. We're getting into it, we're just catching up with the characters, we're doing some smaller plot things, but the character that I was talking about that Kirsten White said would be introduced, and that says would be introduced in the back uh, description, was just introduced. She is interesting, but I want to learn more about her. Um, also, Guinevere is having these like weird dreams, and I want to know more about those. So yeah, we're sort of just in the setup. Um, so yeah, we haven't had, like, an official plot <laughs> established yet, but I'm excited to continue. Sorry if I'm out of breath. I don't know why I am, but whatever. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's very description-heavy, so that's probably why it took me a little longer, because I'm just trying to get reacquainted with, uh, this version of Camelot and stuff like that. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to get through the other, like, 260 pages uh, a little quicker. I am having fun, and yeah. Okay, so I think the reason that it doesn't really feel like the reading rush is one, because it doesn't really feel like summer, and two, because I haven't watched anyone's vlogs yet. I don't know if anyone has uploaded, but it usually starts to feel like it when people start uploading their vlogs, so that'll be really fun. Um, day one is always just sort of like a fever dream, because you're like, oh, it's already the reading rush. Oh my god. I'm excited to watch some daily vlogs. Uh, I'm gonna check my subscription feed and stuff. I'm probably gonna eat lunch soon. I'm gonna watch some TV now because I need a mental break. <laughs> and then I'm gonna eat lunch and then hopefully get further into the Camelot Betrayal. And I will update you when I do so. Um, okay. So I haven't, like, I've moved, I promise. The camera just hasn't. Um, I do have, like, the smallest reading update ever. I'm on page like 130, I read like 30 pages uh, of the Camel Trail, and I don't know why I said the title, you know what I'm reading. Anyway, uh, some really big thing happened, and honestly, okay, this book is kind of reminding me a little bit of Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas, just because in that book it was 
uh, very, like, we're doing this and this and this. It was, like, small missions, and this book has kind of reminded me of that, and I'm really liking it, um, because I liked the way Queen of Shadows did that. It's just not my favorite book in the series, but I'm really enjoying this and how Kirsten White is doing this, and the way she incorporated a couple of the side characters' pasts into this book, and how part of the mission is incorporated, and how the mission sort of tests Guinevere and her fears and stuff, so yeah, I'm enjoying that. But I thought I would do the photo challenge of the day. So the photo challenge is one that um, the Reading Rush has a lot, like, I feel like they have this challenge every year, and that is to recreate a book cover. So I'm gonna put some of my favorites on the screen. Um, and, uh, like, I'm just gonna put three of my favorites, because there were some really good ones. And I thought, and I was thinking, I was looking at my bookshelf of things that I wanted to do, and I remembered that, uh, in 2018, I had this summer thing, like, this art program thing that I did, and we did, I took two spray painting classes, and both of the pieces that I did were inspired by books. So one was inspired by A Darker Shade of Magic, by B.E. Schwab, and one was a sort of replicated cover of Renegades by Marissa Meyer. So I thought I could do one of those Instagram posts where it's two pictures, and I could put A Dark Shade of Magic in front of the Dark Shade of Magic piece, and Renegades in front of the Renegades piece. And I thought it would be really interesting. I hope the Reading Rush sees it. I'm going to tag them in my comment and explain why it's a day late. Um, and, I don't know, I just really love it. I love tagging the authors, because I don't really post on Instagram very much, um, but when I do, I love tagging the authors, and I love reading their comments. It's just really sweet. But, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Uh, so let's go. <laughs> um, so there was absolutely no way for me to film my taking of the pictures, but here they are. I'm going to... I edited them, because they were not great. Uh, I had to take, like, a bunch. <laughs> I had to get my mom to help me because it was, like, impossible to do it myself. I'm gonna go eat some lunch. Hopefully, well, yeah, I'm gonna read more of the Came Up Betrayal. And then, well, right now I'm gonna edit the photo and post it. Then I'm gonna eat lunch. Then I'm gonna read more. So, yeah. Hopefully we can go to Starbucks today. And if we do, I will probably bring you along. Either that, or I'll just bring it home, and then try it in front of the camera. <laughs> Hello! So, it is, I think, around 2 or 2.30, or maybe 3 o'clock, and I had lunch. I uploaded my Instagram post. It was so annoying, because it, uh, it wouldn't let me post two pictures in the same post, so I had to post them separately, but it's fine. I do have a reading update. Um, I'm currently on page 202 of the book, and... It's getting so good. Like, it's getting so intense. I'm reading it a lot quicker. I'm more than halfway through. I have about, like, 170 pages left, I think. And I'm loving it. As I said before, it's like, I... See, sometimes a problem with trilogies and series in general is that book one and book three will both be really, really great. But book two is, like, meant only for building on things that happened in book one and building up to things that are going to happen in book three. But this one is uh, one that, like, each book in the series is a complete story, and I love that. It happened with The Folk of the Air, it happened with Throne of Glass, even though it's not a trilogy. Um, happened with Renegades, I'm trying to think what else, Shatter Me, A Darker Shade of Magic, uh, The Lunar Chronicles, um, and I really love that, so I'm really happy that this book is doing that as well. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to finish this book since there's basically half the day left, a little less than half the day, and I have a little less than half the book left. Um, although I doubt I'm going to have to stay up until midnight reading this. If I do, though, I will because this book is so amazing. I just feel really weird. I don't know why, but this is just a really different reading rush, obviously because of quarantine and all that. and. I don't know, it really snuck up on me, like I didn't realize how close it was coming, and then it did. But this whole summer has just felt so weird. I feel like, I say this every day, but I feel like I'm in a fever dream every single day. Um, so yeah, it's just getting a little weird, but hopefully as the week progresses it'll start to feel more real. Um, 
So yeah, I'm trying to like do things that will put me in a better mood, put me in like a reading rush mood. So I've been watching a couple of vlogs from last year and like previous years as well. And I'm gonna check to see if Lala has uh, uploaded her video because I live for her vlogs. So yeah. Also, I feel like this year is just different because a lot of things are different. Um, there's no video challenge, which, as I said before, makes me a little bit upset, but whatever. Um, and also, it's different because my sister is not home. We dropped her off at college, so things just feel a little weird. Um, and I mean, she's like a rising senior, like she's going into her senior year at college, so it's not like I'm not used to being the only child in the house, but I'm not used to being the only child during the summer, so, yeah, it's a little weird, but, um, I'm probably gonna FaceTime her, or call her, or text her later tonight, um, just wanted to check in, this clip is way longer than it needed to be, sorry if this vlog is really boring, I rewatched my vlog from day one last year, and I was kind of just doing the same thing, just sitting around, updating when I read, that's it for this update, I guess, I'm gonna check in later once I have read some more. So, yeah. Okay, so it's literally been like 0.5 seconds. I just turned off the camera and picked up my phone. But the E. Schwab liked my post. Um, oh my god. Like, you can't see it, but she did like, oh wait, yeah, you can see. It says liked by the E. Schwab. That is so cool, oh my god. She's never like acknowledged me before. I mean, she probably has, and I just don't remember. But like, that's so cool, oh my god. I love her, I like adore her. I think she's such an amazing author. Oh my god, okay. I feel really happy. <laughs> okay, that's all, okay. Um, I believe it's probably like around five o'clock and we're about to have dinner, but I did want to do this update. Um, I am currently on page 299 of this book, The Camel Up a Trail, and I'm still really enjoying it. I'm sort of just, like, along for the ride. I didn't really have any theories going into this book, which I th is why I think I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, I think, as of right now, I do like the Gwenevere Deception more, just because this book is a little bit slow. It's... There are scenes where, like, things are picking up, but I really liked... Something that I loved about the Guinevere Deception is that it's super mysterious, and this book doesn't really have that. There is mystery going on. There's, like, kind of two mysteries happening. Um, but with the Guinevere Deception, it was sort of just, like, intriguing and dark and, like... Sort of... I can't think of the word, but it's, like, you don't know you don't really know what's going on, so I really, really liked that, and, um, a lot of that book takes place at night, so it's, like, you have that creepy atmosphere, Guinevere is, like, alone in the castle, wandering around, but in this book, we sort of just get snippets of, like, things going on, and it's still really good, like, I, it's, I like that it's different, but I also wish there were more things from the Guinevere Deception that I loved, um, Another thing I loved about book one was the little interludes. Like, here, I can show you. Um, I have my art right here. Uh, there are little... If I can find one. Little, like, interludes... Oh my god. Uh, like, sections that are italicized. Like that. And they basically just give more insight into the story. It's from another perspective. And I don't really know how to describe it. They are in this book. So, like, the book starts out with one of those, but it's different. It's way more scattered. With that one, it was, like, every other chapter. It was, like, every two or three or four chapters, there would be a section like that. But with this one, I think there have only been two. Um, there are a couple. I, I don't really know how to explain it. Guinevere is, like, having these random dreams, and those are the italicized sections. If that makes any sense. But then, something that I am really, really loving about this book is that, um, like I said, it's kind of reminding me of Queen of Shadows, because in that book, Selena is basically trying to, like, protect the people that she loves, and she has to do all these little missions to do that, 
and Guinevere is doing a similar thing. And so we get a little bit of backstory for uh, some of the other characters. So, so far we've gotten like a chapter revealing the backstory of Tristan, Isolt, and Brangin. And then we got one for like a backstory of Lancelot. And I really like it because it provides a lot more insight into what how these characters are, these side characters. Since this entire book is told through Guinevere's third person point of view, it was really, it's really refreshing to get those like breaks throughout the book. So I'm really like that. I do have like 70 pages left and I'm going to go set the table and then I'm probably gonna eat dinner and then shower and then hopefully I can read a little bit of this, if not finish it, before we go upstairs to watch Cursed and then hopefully I can wrap my head around like my thoughts on this book, like my full thoughts. I do feel like the ending is going to be super explosive. I can just feel it. Like you know when you can just, you know you're getting to something really important. So yeah. Also, I've been trying to predict book three's title and I can't think of it because book one was the Guinevere Deception, book two was the Camelot Betrayal. So I can't think of anything that, like, the something. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Arthurian, maybe? Or, like, I don't know. I really can't think. The Merlin something or other. I, okay. I'm gonna go <laughs> because I'm just blabbering at this point. Hello. So, I think, what time is it? It is 7.59. So it's basically 8 o'clock. And I think I'm going to read some more of my book. Um, as I said before, I have like 70 pages left, so I think I'm gonna read like 30 or 40 pages, like just the next couple of chapters, and then see what my family's doing when they want to watch Cursed, and what's going down. So, I mean, I'm definitely finishing this book today. I have 70 pages left. Um, this day kind of flew by. It's starting to feel more like the reading rush. It's starting to feel a little bit more like summer, and I don't know, it just feels good. I'm feeling great. I don't have anything to add because I haven't read anything since the last clip, but I'm gonna go read the next couple of chapters and check in um, a little bit. Um, okay, so it's like very little time has passed, but I am like 327 pages into the book now. I'm on chapter 40. We just got another, like, interlude, italicized section. It's like, like, as I said, the interstitial chapters. And it was, uh, the backstory of Morgan Le Fay, who has been a figure that we've talked about in the series a lot, but she hasn't really come up, and we got to finally see her story, and it was so interesting. I, once again, don't want to give away a lot because a ton of people have not read this book, and it's not going to be out for a while. Um, but it was so interesting, and the last, like, line was so cool, and I just want to savor the last, like, 40 pages I have, but I also really want to read it now. So I'm going to see what my family's doing and see when we're going to watch TV and stuff like that, but also I just love the way Kirsten White writes. She writes differently with each book, and I feel like each book she improves. I just love when an author gets better and better with each of their books. It just is so exciting to see. I am loving this. I, As I said before, I like knew it was going to get way better, and it so far has. It's still really, really slow, so if you didn't like The Guinevere Deception for its slow pacing, I don't know if you would like this um, anymore because it is very slow as well. Um, it is starting to, like, really pick up, though. Uh, but I like the slow pacing, so it's not a huge deal to me. But oh my god, I cannot wait to finish this book. Like, I am just very interested because the italicized sections don't give, like, a ton of information. They just give you, like, a nugget. And I really want to know, um, this isn't a spoiler, Guinevere, it's, like, in the description of book one. Uh, Guinevere is not really Guinevere, she, like, replaced the real one, and she forgot her name, like, her true name, and I really want to figure out what her real name is, but it's probably not gonna be revealed until book three, but I really want to know. I'm just hoping that it's gonna be revealed in this book, but I do doubt that, so, yeah. Uh, okay, um, yeah, 
Uh, the next update for me will probably be when I finish the book, and then I'm going to wrap up this vlog. So, yeah. It's already probably super long. So, I'm going to end this here and check back in once I finish the book. So, it is around 9 o'clock. Um, this lighting is terrible, but whatever. I have finished The Camelot Betrayal by Kirsten White. Oh my god, this book was so good. I think I settled on a rating of 4.25 stars. I really, really loved it. Um, I do think I liked the Guinevere Deception a little bit more, but uh, they're pretty equal in my mind. I really enjoyed both of them. I loved this as its own story. Um, I loved the political intrigue, and also there was a new character introduced, a new woman, and there was a little bit of a thing where I was like, oh, are they going to be rivals? But then, um, it was, like, cleared up that they are not rivals, and I really liked that. Um, uh, because women need to stick together. So, yeah, I really love that. Oh, I'm just not even remotely in focus. It's fine. I hope that's better. Although, there was a kind of a funny typo that I forgot to mention earlier in the book, if I can find it. It was... Oh my god, I literally... Eh, why cannot I find it? English? What? Okay, yeah. So, it's, uh, one of the interlude chapters, and it says, uh, without ceremony, comma, thrown over seven. It says, like, over and then seven right next to it. So that was funny. Um, had a good laugh about that. But yeah, I loved the ending of this book. It had a pretty big cliffhanger. So I'm really excited for book three. I'm really hoping there are going to be arcs for book three because it's probably not going to come out until like November of 2021. Um, and I need an arc. Like I really hope there are going to be arcs because I don't know if I can wait like more, more than a year for the finale because <laughs> the ending of this book was so intense and it was just like, oh my God. I loved it. It was so good. I love all the characters. I'm obsessed with uh, Kirsten White's writing. Also, okay, I feel like this book, I feel like it's not, like, there's no way this book is 370 pages. There are so many words on every page, and Kirsten White was talking, and she said that this book is, like, 110,000 words. And she also said that, like, Now I Rise is 110,000 words. And that book has, like, 450 pages, and this one has 370. So there's clearly, like, a lot of words on every page, which is why I would feel like I had been reading for 20 minutes and I'd only gotten, like, 30 pages in. Uh, I'm not used to reading that slow, so I'm a pretty quick reader. So, yeah, it took me way longer to read this 370 page book than it would normally take to read a 370 page book but whatever I loved every second um and it was so good I don't really have anything bad to say <laughs> so yeah I'm still going to be predicting the title for book three until it is announced which probably won't be until next year love that <laughs> I am going to go scream about this on Twitter and watch Cursed but that is it for my day one vlog. I'm really excited to continue on for the week. Um, I, this is probably going to be the longest vlog. My day one vlogs tend to be my longest. I really had a lot of fun today. Hopefully, um, I'll get out of the house tomorrow and maybe do that Starbucks thing that I was saying I was going to do. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. I'm going to have six more, so you can look forward to those. And... All my social media links are in the description box below, booktubeathon links, um, resources for the Black Lives Matter movement, all that stuff is down there, so check it out. Um, but that is it for this video, I really hope you enjoyed, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!